Here are the horoscopes for the week of the 7th to the 13th of September 2015. So Venus has just turned direct and before we step forwards it's a good idea to go back and to trace the story that we've learnt. So phase one was the beginning of June, Venus into Leo, all the way up to the 25th of July when Venus turned retrograde at the very first point of Virgo. So the first phase is all about awareness. We may have been challenged because Venus is our heart center, it's where we create from, it's where we radiate from. But often when we're looking at the outside to give us our value and to show us love, we are reliant on others, we're not doing our inner work ourselves. So the first phase could have brought up an awareness of us needing to return to a simpler space, a more radiant space and a more creative way of living. From the 25th of July to the 6th of September, we have then had the retrograde phase. So retrograde means to go inwards, it's the magnetic aspect of the planet in its relationship to Earth. So we've gone in now from the 25th of July all the way up to this weekend and had a look at where we love ourselves, reconnecting with our core values finding our self-esteem inside, not looking for it from others, especially relationships, and finding that value, learning to reconnect with our heart center. So a very lovely but quite challenging retrospective there where we may have been shown disrespect or dishonor or a lack of worth from other people in order that we can go in and we can find it in ourselves and we can be more centered. Then from the 6th of September through to the 9th of October, we've got the final forward phase. So we should feel stronger now, more self-supporting as if we've taken the stabilizers off the bicycle or the scaffold off the building. And more aware of the need to actually be creating and working generally, radiating from that place rather than looking for the outside world to supply creativity and love to us. It's an interesting aspect with Venus when we look at money as well as love. This is the two things in our lives that we kind of strive and reach out for. We block ourselves and it's all to do with whether we deserve or not. So when you think of love and money, we can actually stop that coming in on a clear channel into our lives because somehow we believe that we don't deserve and that's the lack of self-worth. So worth and value and deserving and receiving are all linked in our relationship to Venus. So can we unblock that channel? Can we actually say, I do deserve, I'm worth it, and I open up to receive with gratitude? So deprogramming a lot of our attitude to money there as well as love. So we're on the forward phase now, we should start to see the outside world reflect back to us what it is that we're radiating out from our newly cleaned up centre and from our new sense of joy and radiance. We're coming up to a Mercury retrograde which will be the next phase of this story, so that's to come, but obviously that will be to look at how we think about love, how we think about relationships and how we calibrate our masculine feminine balance but that's not coming in just yet so maybe take a breather retrace those dates have a look at what's happened have a look at how different you feel and how more empowered you are stepping forwards thanks to venus retrograding in leo strengthening our heart and our solar plexus and for most of this week we have jupiter opposite neptune Last week we had the sun opposite Neptune, which is a little bit like the sun breaking through the clouds, showing us where we're hiding behind the veils, where we might have been deluding ourselves, or where we may have felt disconnected spiritually. And all of a sudden the lights come on, and we feel that reconnection. We realize that we don't need to hide behind security blankets. We can let go of some of the protection modules that we've put in the past, to protect us from past pain, to stop us from going into the same scenario again. But we don't actually need to surround ourselves with barriers. If we stand strong in Neptune's tuning fork, in our spiritual, resonant, cellular, pure connection, then this is starting to strip away some of those protection modules that we've put into place so that we can actually stand pure. 
because if we do protect ourselves from any pain in the past, all we wanted to do was to make ourselves aware, to remind ourselves not to do that again. We don't need to actually put barriers up, like I say, we can actually just take the memory of what we did and why, what the cause was, what the effect was, learn the lesson and step forwards much more lightly with less density. So there was a stripping away there with the sun opposite Neptune last week showing us in clear light of day where our core resonant essence is and where we're hiding or deluding. But this week Jupiter is opposite Neptune and this will be growing for the next couple of weeks. So we have made the space with the sun coming and clearing away, showing us how we can get rid of some of that debris. And now Jupiter will come along to say, this is how you can step into that space. This is how you can align your sovereignty with your spirituality and actually be that magnificent force. So very, very positive aspect here. It's a once a year thing. And this time we're looking at Virgo opposite Pisces. So we've had the awareness and now we can actually grow into that space and step into our magnificence. So I'd say that's one of the key themes that we can be working with this week and next week. Then by the end of the week we come into the dark moon in Leo. So that's a great opportunity to have realised the Venus retrograde story and to let go of anything that we don't want to hold on to anymore to do with lack of confidence, lack of courage and lack of radiance. So the dark moon is a great time to let go, to banish, to release and this will wrap up that Venus story for us on Friday before we then step into the new moon in Virgo on Sunday. So that's the 13th of September we have a partial solar eclipse new moon in Virgo. And this is beautiful because it falls in the 12th house of reconnection. So very holistic. Virgo is all about healing and wholeness from the seed to the fruit. The gestation period of the mother giving birth and how we can work naturally within the cycles of time. Doing the right thing at the right time and being at one with nature. And we've got the new moon there opposite Neptune again saying that's all very well on the physical plane, on the mental plane, but Neptune calling us there to take that into the spirit and soul plane as well. So a very, very deep new moon coming up on the 13th, and at this point and into next week, we can really start setting those intentions that we've been holding back on over the summer with a retrograde phase which said, don't step forward too quickly, go back and reconnect to your centre. So with a Virgo new moon, back to school time, harvest gathered in, this is an excellent time to plant new seeds, to set intentions, to create a structured plan going forwards, working with the cycles of the year, little by little, the small detail building up to the big picture and to be able to reap the rewards next year. So finally we can actually start to step forwards. But the plans that we make now, having connected with our Radiant Creative Centre, will be much more meaningful as a result, rather than just planning for the sake of it, or being busy for the sake of it. So we'll start to feel now that we're actually making plans that will see us well into the future, living with our true essence, connecting with our simple inner child, Radiant Self, and actually that will deliver fruit in the long run, that's really appropriate to where we're heading. So a beautiful week this week, very deep, very still, but by next week we're stepping forward. So just do that releasing work with the dark moon on Friday, do the recalibration of the spiritual alignment and stepping into that magnificence now that we've found our worth and then we can actually put some plans into action and live our authentic selves from next week onwards. So those are the horoscopes for this week, and I'll see you next week. The Virgo New Moon is a great time to set yourself a new back-to-school challenge, so why not learn something? This is an excellent time to engage with astrology. So if anybody out there would be interested in taking my year-long astrology course, you can start at any point and take your time, but this is a great time to step forwards and make that intention to say, I'm going to engage my mind in a long-term project 
that will be productive within a year. So do contact me, anybody out there who's interested in online astrology, intuitive astrology. It's very much you learning to do this for yourself. It's not difficult and I'll guide you through step-by-step -step modules on how to do that. But if you're not quite ready for that yet, then I have an online group where you can post your chart up and you can start to learn how to work with the current energies as well as join in lively discussions about general astrology and what's going on. So that's a beautiful way to just link with your chart, to feel free to ask questions and to, to connect with like-hearted souls. So a very simple, lovely, growing online group there where you can belong, you can relax and you can learn at your own pace. So for any of this or a reading or any more of my courses, please contact me zoehind7 at gmail.com This week on Saturday I'll be running the last of my London tree walks on Hampstead Heath 2 till 4 so if you're interested in that we'll be exploring the old Celtic oyam, the tree language, the tree calendar and learning about the myth and legend of all of the trees tree recognition which brings your walk into 3D awareness and the healing and magic properties of all of the trees so lovely Virgo, holistic thing to do there. Do contact me if you're interested. That's Saturday the 12th, Hampstead Heath, London, 2 till 4.